Good morning, everyone. Um, this morning, our invocation will be led by Mike Close. If he's on, if he's not, I, I'll take it. Um, and then Dave Williamson will lead our pledge. Is uh, Mike Close on today? Uh, David, this is Lyle Brown. I've got the invocation this morning. Okay, super. Thank you, Lyle. Please join me in a prayer in gratitude for our mothers in honor of this Mother's Day. Good and gentle God, we pray in gratitude for our mothers and for all the women who have joined with you in the wonder of bringing forth new life. Grant to all mothers the courage they need to face the uncertain future that life with children always brings. Give them the strength to live and to be loved in return, not perfectly, but humanly. Give them the faithful support of spouses, family, and friends as they care for the physical and spiritual growth of their children. Give them joy and delight in their children to sustain them through the trials of motherhood. Most of all, give them the wisdom to turn to you for help when they need it most. And grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Lyle and Dave. Do we have any guests on this morning? I'd like to welcome any guests. If you have a guest or if you uh, are a guest, please unmute yourself and introduce. <clears throat> How about announcements? I know- um, Kate, David, I have a guest. For us. I, it took me a minute just to, to scroll through. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Dan Schwegman. Dan is with First Merchants uh, Bank in their wealth management program, resident here in uh, Dublin with his wife, Morgan. Uh, they just added uh, a nine-year-old future banker uh, to the family here in uh, uh, an exciting time. But uh, Dan, welcome, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll have the opportunity to meet uh, a number of our Rotarians uh, sooner than later in a live meeting here. But welcome, Dan Sch Schwegman. Thanks for being here, Dan. Welcome to our meeting. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Any other guests this morning? Or if not, we'll move to uh, Caitlin for our first announcement. <laughs> Hi everyone, so I'm Caitlin, everyone knows that. Um, <laughs> I am still currently the president of Rotaract, no one's kicked me out of my position yet. Um, we have a few upcoming events, but I do wanna talk to you about a really awesome event that we're gonna be sponsoring and helping to fundraise for. It's June 27th, and it's part of our Dream Big campaign for Rotaract. Um, I, sent out some comment cards to the youth and the public and they kind of came back and said that um, a lot of the youth can't afford to play baseball or softball or even have a pair of shoes for band camp um, or even rent an instrument which is roughly around 300 and something dollars for a trombone seasonal. Um, so the Dream Big campaign is they pretty much submit their dream and we make it happen. So if they want to go on a mission trip to help others and they can't afford it, they submit an application, we review it as a club, and then we pick what we believe would be a good big recipient. Um, our first ever Dream Big recipient will be Lex Bowman, and he is a very talented musician. Um, he can play not only the guitar, but the piano, violin, and flute. <laughs> And he is going to be performing live in front of 125 people on June 27th at 6 p.m. at Kaufman Park Amphitheater. Um, Music Royale is sponsoring the speaker, the lights, all of that wonderful jazz to really make this a 
true authentic performance with the professional band. Um, what I'm asking out of the Rotarian, and I think it's doable because our sponsorship fee for businesses starts at $20. $20. We're not asking for $100 per sponsor or $150 or even $1,000. We're asking for something that's really reasonable in my eyes, I believe. Um, Rotaract has already put down their sponsorship. Sunny Street Cafe, whoop, whoop, ash, has already put down his sponsorship. And I'm hoping for some more Rotarians to kind of join the mix. Again, the sponsorship starts at $20. Lex will mention you while he's doing his performance and you'll also be on our sponsorship banner. Now, of course, the more you give, the bigger your logo will be. <laughs> Um, but you have the option as well of coming to the show. And if you'd like to come to the show with your family, um, the tickets are $2 each rather than an obscene amount because we want everyone to be able to join. Um, we don't do not include because of the money cost. Um, but again, this is for our Dream Big campaign. And so half of your sponsorship will go towards the campaign. And the other half will go towards the cost of the show. Um, if you guys are interested, please email rotaract.dublinohio at gmail.com, subject line dream big. Again, the sponsorship just starts at $20. Um, we also have a dream big campaign basket for Pro Am. So if you are a sponsor, we do ask that you include some information in that basket. So we do need all of the sponsors um, to kind of be rounded up in a way by next week. So if you are interested, please get a hold of me as soon as possible so that I can collect your business information from you and uh, we'll get that started. Now. Hey, hey, Caitlin, can you put on the chat side, just put the address again, please? Uh, yes, of course. Rotaract.dublinoh at gmail.com. And that's Rotaract. <laughs> the, can you put it in the chat, Caitlin? What? Can you put it in the chat? Oh, yes. Yes, I can. Um, and then for May 21st, our backyard barbecue, um, I've contacted the Dublin Food Pantry and I will be picking up a sign and their dip jar, which is an automatic <laughs> transfer of funds, so to speak, straight to them. So that way when we're at pins and the people that like put it reserved for their ticket or just um, are walking on by and they want to see what we're doing, they can always give as well. Um, if any of you guys can come, you do not need to purchase a ticket online like the public does. You guys will be free as Rotarians. So thank you very much for your support throughout the year. <laughs> if you do want to come, I do just ask that you drop off some canned goods. <laughs> um, but other than that, just email the same email that I'm going to send in the chat and uh, let me know that you're coming so that I have a head count. That's all. I'm complete. Caitlin, uh, you can count me in for a personal donation for that. You guys, uh, pretty much every fundraiser and, and thing that we do, Rotaract gets involved somehow. So thanks for all your help and we'll certainly support you too. Thank you. And I just sent it in the club. <laughs> Thank you, Caitlin. Hey, um, Dave, David, this is Dave, this, yep. this is Dave Lundrigan. I have an announcement, if I could. Okay. So, uh, Caitlin mentioned the Pro-Am auction coming up. It's, uh, it begins on May 27th at 5 p.m. and will run to June 18th. Um, so far, we only have 10 items donated. So we uh, really need some help getting different items. Uh, it could be a $25 gift card. It could, we have several golf outings, but Anything anyone can do to help, please let me know. Um, I'm the one collecting the items, so my email and my contact information is in the directory. So please, if we could, this is one of our fundraisers this year. Uh, there's nothing too small that you can donate, so please shoot me a note. And uh, we need, we've got about 20 days to put everything together, so any help you can give us would be much appreciated. Thank you, Dave. Um, Roberta has an announcement um, about the food drive. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Just a reminder that we are still collecting till the end of May. 
So it can be either cans or dollars. Claudia is collecting the dollars and there are six drop off points for the cans. You can drop them at State Bank or um, City Barbecue corporate office. It's in the email that's coming out at 9 a.m. every Friday until the end. Um, if you don't wanna donate three cans, five cans, 10 cans, donate $5 and send the check to the um, to Claudia and just make it out to the Dublin AM Rotary Foundation. And thank you to, um, well, my mind's going blank, but I think I've got about 60 or 70 cans that uh, some people dropped off at my house. So thank you. Lyle, did you collect any yet cans? I meant, at, did anyone drop at, any, at your house? No one has uh, dropped any cans off at our house. Okay, yet. okay. So Ramona has some, State Bank has about 30. Um, I have about 60. Dave Benz um, has about 60. So we're off to a good start and we've got a lot of donations coming in, which is really, really great. And um, I did a photo shoot for Paige Bornbrock's church. And instead of getting paid, I told him to please send a donation to Claudia for the, well, to the Dublin Foundation for, um, for the can drive. So thank you, Paige, for doing that. And I, hey, yes. Hey, Roberta, it's Stephanie. Is there an online way we can just use um, credit card to do that? Just call Claudia with your credit card. Sorry, you have to use the phone. Okay. The old fashioned way, just use your phone. <laughs> Yeah, so just call David, Claudia. Um, I David wish we had a button that you could just click on and donate, but I'm sorry, we don't. Too expensive uh, from my understanding. So thank you, everybody. Um, and we're hoping, we're competing against, I think Wolf said 15 other clubs. So we want to win that $500 happy hour. So please donate, please. Thank you. David, if I may make a comment. Yes. I would like to uh, thank Claudia, or excuse me, Roberta. The photo shoot that she did for our church ribbon cutting and the new open of our pavilion was, as you would expect, outstanding quality. What Roberta hasn't told you is that the $500 check that we had offered to pay her for her services, she asked that we donate to our club and to the food drive. So, Berta, thank you for all you continue to do for Rotary. You've just been such a priceless asset and and what Rotarians are meant to uh, be in our service organization. So, thank you so much. And really thank wants you, to Paige. win this thing. For thank the, you, Paige, uh, thank you. I overheard Roberta uh, trying to get confidential intel out of Wolf earlier about how the other clubs are doing. She really wants to win this thing. So get your donations in. One dollar equals one can or drop off cans at any of the convenient drop offs. Um, what other announcements do we have this morning? David, I have one also. Go for it, Dave. So my wife is putting up the PE the PPE and safety committee at the Memorial Tournament. And she needs some people on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Her contact information in the chat. And um, you have time. There is shifts from seven to one and one to seven. Thank you. Dave, I'll also give an update uh, on our global grant. Uh, we are making a lot of progress on that. Uh, we are moving forward with uh, uh, Mohan's project. Uh, we are meeting virtually the um, club from India, their president and uh, incoming president and past president um, via Zoom next week. So that's where we'll discuss what role each club is going to take. So. Um, you know, hopefully we're not too far away from making this happen. Fantastic. Thank you, Wolf and, uh, and Sue Kendall for helping out um, and leading that effort. Um, other announcements? I have one. Uh, 
if you go to Aldi's, they sell soup cans for 50 cents and vegetable can for 47 cents. So if a hundred dollars would get you 200 cans at least. So you might think about that. That's it. Absolutely. Dave Williamson. Yeah, just to let everybody know, uh, our club has rented a storage unit where we can begin to assimilate all of the extraneous materials that people have stored in their garage and their basement and things of that nature. We're trying to make sure that we have a good accurate inventory on all of the things that the club owns and uses as part of their operational year. So if you have anything that in your basement or in your garage that you'd like to have stored in the unit, I appreciate Let me know what it is, how much you have, and uh, I can make arrangements with you to get it picked up or placed into the storage unit. And then we want to do a comprehensive inventory so we have a better idea of just exactly all the assets that the club has. So uh, we have the storage unit. It's available. If you have anything from Rotary that you want to get out of your garage or basement, let me know and we'll make arrangements to get it from you. Thanks. Thank you, Dave. Does anyone else have an announcement for this morning? Uh, Laura, unmute. You're muted. <laughs> there you go. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. May the 22nd, we have the Miracle League. Uh, if we could get eight more volunteers, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, we only have two events for this cause, and one is in May and one is in July. So anybody who could sign up would be uh, greatly appreciated. Thank you. Other announcements this morning? If not, I'm going to go to Paige Vornbrock to introduce our speaker for today. You're, you're muted, Paige. My bad. Thanks, David. I have the distinct pleasure of uh, introducing Colleen Gilger, our Dublin Economic Development Director, to all of us. Everyone here, I think, knows Colleen well. I hope you have had the chance to read the bio that uh, Calvin Gephardt put up on our uh, email chat here, really giving you an overview of the incredible work that Colleen has done. No surprise, OSU grad, she's been with the city, I think probably close to 20 years. And I remember very distinctly the first year she started with uh, the economic development director when Dana McDaniel was there. I'm not going to read the bio, but I do want to take just a minute or two to highlight some things that really, I think, amplify what she means to our city. And one of those, about 15 years ago, plus or minus, decided to leave the public service sector and take a position with Cardinal Health. I can distinctly remember being in two or three business circles where that announcement was kind of being passed around and you heard the whole room go, <gasps> it just took the air out of the room, knowing how much she meant to, to our economic development department. And fortunately, a year or two, she has come back and is now managing 90 million square feet of commercial space. She's been a tremendous asset to uh, Dr. Hoadley and our Dublin Schools Business Advisory Council, I know she'll be continued for uh, Dr. Martin as he steps into that role. But if you just think of Bridge Park, our Dublin Methodist Hospital, the new OSU hospital that's coming, Ohio University's Heritage College, a uh, 65 acre campus for Amazon, these are all things that have transpired under Colleen's leadership. And so with that, uh, Colleen, once again, we're thrilled to have you uh, give, give us an, up, an economic update of 
of the market area and always look forward to your comments. Thank you for joining us. Well, good morning, everybody. So I have three screens in front of me. I'm hopeful that you are seeing my slide. Can I get a thumbs up? Yep, you're all seeing it. Excellent. And it's not my note slide, right? <laughs> good. Thank you. I see Peter nodding. So thank you. Um, so thank you for that kind introduction, Paige. Um, yes, I have been here 23 years um, with the city of Dublin and uh, the, the green runs through the veins. So uh, this is a hard place to shake. Um, so probably the most important thing um, to start off with is um, my slide is purple. Um, and that's very uh, unlike Dublin, right? Um, there is no shamrock on this screen. Uh, it is not your typical Dublin colors, and yet you have this Dublin person here this morning talking about um, this new thing called the Beta District, and, and nowhere in here do you see a shamrock. Um, so we're re really excited to launch this new brand with many partners um, that we have in the community. Um, so I, I hope you uh, learn a little bit this morning, and uh, we'd love to have you pitch in and be a partner. Uh, so when we're done, uh, get those wheels turning and, and think about uh, ways that you can introduce us to businesses who you think would be a good fit for what we are trying to do here uh, in the Beta District. Let's see if I can get my slides to advance here. There we go. So I will start with uh, what is it and where is it? Um, clearly it's in central Ohio or I wouldn't be here, right? So the Beta District is, a, is an all encompassing ecosystem. Um, so we are trying to build a region uh, where the private sector, uh, government and academia can work together uh, in what we're calling an open testing playground where companies can come in and test safely uh, and try to deploy new technologies in real world settings. Uh, so much testing goes on in controlled laboratories uh, or in private settings. And what we're trying to do as a collaboration of multiple governments is bring these testing opportunities to the public realm, real world testing so that they can ensure that these products will work. So specifically, we're talking about an economic development area from Dublin uh, up through Marysville, um, going all the way up to East Liberty, where the Honda plant is. And this is a that 35 mile loop uh, of the smart corridor, the US 33 smart corridor, which you've probably heard about. We've been talking about that for a couple of years. So it connects all three of these communities. Uh, the Beta District also reaches all the way down into Columbus, where we pick up our partners like Ohio State, uh, the Center for Automotive Research, which is CAR, uh, which is on the Ohio State campus. And this makes for a much larger smart mobility ecosystem. Uh, why here? Well, we have one of the highest concentrations of college students in the nation, uh, about 135,000. Uh, we have 18,000 automotive related workers in our region. We have seven times more engineers in our region than Ann Arbor or Vegas. Uh, those are two of our peer communities that we benchmark against, against for connected vehicle research. Um, and 25% of the workforce is in an, a research and development uh, related field in the central Ohio region. So the who behind the Beta District is a, is a pretty long list. So I'll give you a little bit of logo soup there. Uh, it's, it's a collaborative list and it begins with the Northwest 33 Innovation Corridor Council of Governments. It's a very um, big mouthful. So we call that the COG, the, uh, the Council of Governments. And that's made up of Marysville, Dublin, Union County, and the Marysville Union County Port Authority. So these governments all got together and formed this, uh, this new entity, uh, this council of governments uh, where we're super collaborative and can work together. Uh, we have partners that I've mentioned uh, like Ohio State, Honda, some new ones on here that I haven't mentioned yet, Battelle, Smart Columbus, uh, Logan County, um, and uh, ODOT uh, and Drive Ohio, which is a new entity that has spun out of ODOT. I'll give you a little bit of history here because this goes back several years uh, before it was called the Beta District uh, when everybody was getting together. So in 2014, uh, multiple governments realized a collective asset 
uh, with this uh, incredible road and incredible workforce and a great list of very innovative companies along this corridor. So we began talking about how we could collaborate and how we could get funding to work together to make something really special happen. So in 2016, uh, Marysville uh, took the lead on an application where we all followed uh, as partners. And uh, collectively, we won a $5.9 million grant um, from US DOT. And additionally, then ODOT pledged an additional $16 million for technology installation along our 33 corridor. Uh, so, you know, quite a bit of money here <clears throat> getting us going. And so what we did with that, we started an auto-centered idea to make the US 33 corridor this smart, high-tech testing area, specifically for connected and autonomous vehicles. So we started there. In 2017, uh, the state uh, gave an additional $45 million to put smart mobility upgrades at the Transportation Transportation Research Center, TRC, uh, which is up north of Marysville. Uh, it is a private testing ground, uh, test track, uh, indoor and outdoor facilities. And uh, so this provides that closed testing environment. And it's probably central Ohio or even the state's best kept secret. Uh, this place is phenomenal uh, for testing uh, autonomous and connected vehicles. So it got a huge upgrade, which was very important to this. Uh, in 2018, Drive Ohio was established. So ODOT uh, and the state of Ohio created a new entity specifically focused on statewide technology and data framework, specifically around smart mobility. Uh, and one of the first projects that Drive Ohio did wasn't necessarily driving on roads, it was testing unmanned drone aircraft along the 33 corridor. None of you knew that was happening, did you? Didn't see them flying up overhead, but they were there. Uh, in 2019, we took a lot of that grant money uh, and put it to good use installing the fiber optics that we needed along the 33 corridor. Marysville, with Honda's support, uh, installed 27 smart traffic signals in their entire city. Uh, the 33 corridor got roadside sensors that could talk to vehicles that were equipped with, uh, with the same technology. And so this is where the beta district truly began. Uh, the brand was quietly uh, put together and launched uh, during uh, the pandemic. So uh, that's why I'm here in 2021 to talk to you about it because it, uh, it was a strange year last year. So here we are in 21 and we're doing more vehicle testing along the corridor. We're doing more drone testing. And uh, ODOT um, with Drive Ohio has actually created an aircraft, an unmanned aircraft system center. Uh, so uh, now we're getting more formal with exactly how we're doing that testing. So we really want you to know that this is becoming more than just mobility. Uh, it's more than just connected cars. We're really creating an economic development platform in this area. It's also a workforce and talent driver and talent recruiter. Uh, we're promoting smart workers. We're pro promoting uh, an open collaborative place for training and testing. So this ecosystem has a lot of different prongs and you can see here, we're talking about, you know, the real world testing and living laboratories. So different types of communities, um, open government who's willing to partner with you, uh, the academia that's willing to partner with you. Uh, so you can see here that it's a, a multi-pronged approach. And we're casting a, a very wide net of the industries that we're wanting to work with here again beyond mobility although you do see them on here as being super important with automotive manufacturing transportation uh, technology aerospace but really you know logistics and distribution play a big part here not just um, with the vehicles they're putting on the road but the technology they're using to manage logistics and distribution uh, healthcare is becoming also super important here. Uh, it's connections with stress and people in vehicles, 
Uh, and ag tech is also a very important industry here because, again, when you're looking at the types of, of land masses that we have to test, uh, it's more than just a 33 corridor. We have a lot of land between Dublin and East Liberty uh, that has an agricultural focus. So we're even welcoming uh, companies that would like to come in and test in our communities beyond just the road, uh, but within our communities. We're calling it an innovation playground. So some of the assets of the beta district include public and private entities. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, open road and controlled environment testing and a statewide reach. Uh, I mentioned TRC where companies can come in and do private uh, controlled environment testing. Uh, Drive Ohio uh, has uh, opened up the Ohio Turnpike for additional testing and the 75 corridor uh, and our 33 corridor. So there's multiple places throughout Ohio where Drive Ohio is testing their technologies. Uh, connected Marysville, uh, within the city of Marysville, they've created uh, a new entity called Collect Connected Marysville where they are working with companies who specifically want to come into that city and do different types of testing in that community's environment. And Connected Dublin and the Smart Mobility Corridor. Uh, so Connected Dublin, like Connected Marysville, we also are a sub brand of the beta district, if you will, where companies that specifically want to come in and test in Dublin, in our community, whether it's a partnership with our schools, with different neighborhoods, uh, different office buildings or different roads. Uh, my office is heading up the Connected Dublin effort. So if a company wants to start small within just Dublin and then eventually expand along the corridor and in uh, throughout the whole beta district, we're offering different entry point stages to ramp up different types of testing. Uh, specifically in Dublin, we've connected six traffic signals. Uh, we're doing some smart parking monitoring in Bridge Park. Uh, we're doing some connected vehicle research and some data collections at our roundabouts. And we've partnered with several companies, some in and some outside of Dublin, including Ease Logistics, who's doing a pilot project with Goodyear, and Fujitsu. Now the Smart Corridor, again, is very specific to the road itself. Uh, and Marysville and Dublin uh, are the two entities taking the lead on bringing in companies interested specifically in testing on the road corridor. It provides an all weather testing environment, which is something that uh, Vegas and Arizona, who are our competitors, cannot provide. Uh, we love the idea that companies can come test here uh, in snow and ice, uh, because that's where uh, really the, the money meets the, uh, the, the road there, right? Where we need to make sure that what we're testing in vehicles uh, can happen in some of our worst weather conditions. And we're providing that open environment again, where someone or a company interested in testing in an urban, a suburban or a rural environment, we're providing them all of those different uh, opportunities. And the goal, you know, why are we doing this? Well, city council has come forward and told uh, us at a staff level uh, and told our community that we, the city of Dublin, would like to be the most connected city in the United States. So it's about connection through technology, uh, connection by working with other government entities uh, and our private uh, partners. And, and also um, connecting citizens and connecting our companies and providing the best uh, scenario for workforce training, research and development testing. Uh, and we really want to be a place where we can plant that flag um, for this country and say, hey, this is, this is a place that's open. Government wants to work with you and we've made it easy for businesses to come in and test here. So this is the ultimate goal. And so as we're putting this stake in the ground uh, to be this place, like I said, we uh, need to do this together. As we're rolling this out, we're looking for companies that are interested in wanting to test. Um, we can match you with other companies. We can match you with the right community and environment. Uh, and we can match you with the right technologies. 
Uh, so this is my, my open invitation to all of you uh, to come in and test in the beta district. And of course, I have to get the website plug out there. Um, it's super easy to remember, thebetadistrict.com. Oh, I don't know if you can hear all the sirens behind me. Um, thebetadistrict.com, I welcome you to go and visit that website. Uh, there is a form on there too that if you are interested in learning more or wanting to participate with us, you can actually submit a form there. And from there, I can take your questions if you have any. <laughs> uh, Colleen, this is Ingrid. Great presentation. Thank you. You're welcome. Can you connect us up with some insurance companies? Because the TRC is uh, a great facility, a fabulous, fabulous testing facility, truly world class. Um, sometimes the insurance requirements for small businesses are quite high. So you probably have connections for things like that, or, um, or maybe filling out that form would be the right way to go if we, uh, if we see that address one more time. But any suggestions on things like that for small businesses? That, that's, a, that's a great question. And hi, Ingrid, I didn't see who that was at first. It's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time. Um, you know, so, so testing at TRC, right, because it's a, a closed environment, it is a, a lot easier than taking things out on the open road. And to be honest, I have not had the insurance question yet, uh, but I do know that uh, hopefully companies that want to come in and test are doing so under a contract with individual communities um, where we can probably help to offset some of those liabilities uh, because we wouldn't just say, hey, there's the road, have at it. Right. Um, we want to make sure that we know what you're doing on the roads and that you know safety is uh, a number one concern. So um, I would say that hopefully we could handle a lot of that through uh, the different contracts that we would put in place. Oh, super, super. And can we have a copy of your slide deck? We always like having those for, uh, for sharing as part of the recordings for these meetings. Thank you. Absolutely, yes. I will, I will get that uh, over to, to Wolf here at the, uh, at the end. Fabulous presentation. Thank you for being here. Colleen, Todd Hoodley here. Um, first off, great presentation and great to see you, Colleen. Hey, I'm wondering as we're coming out of the pandemic now, pre-pandemic workforce needs and limitations of employees was always a big deal. We heard about limits in the companies, uh, especially like you know the, the technology companies, what are the workforce needs that you're hearing from these companies that will be associated with the 33 corridor and just interested in, in that information? You know, it goes back to uh, what we've been harping for the last, you know, probably at least a decade now uh, with you, Dr. Holdley, it's, it's the STEM fields, uh, the science, the technology, the computer uh, programming knowledge. Um, but in a lot of cases, it's, it's also um, the repairing that needs to go on behind the scenes with technology. Um, you know, we've heard that more robots are building cars, but robots break. And we need to make sure that people know how to fix the robots. Um, I'll give you a, another good example. We're working with a company who wants to come in and build laboratories in Dublin. And it's something as simple as building these laboratories requires a lot of very specialized plumbing. And they're asking for plumbing leads. And I'll tell you, the plumbers are getting harder and harder to find. Um, so here we are talking about autonomous drones and cars that are driving themselves. But it also goes back to some of the trades that support all of the technology. Uh, so I never uh, want to discount how important it is for electricians, robotics, uh, and something as simple, well, which isn't simple, plumbing, because how many of us are willing to take on that project in our lives? Uh, so again, some of the high-tech STEM um, education, but also the trades. Good. Thanks, Colleen. Colleen, uh, what about the uh, the drone testing and that kind of thing? I mean, is, is that for deliveries like from Amazon or, or what other kinds of ideas are they thinking about? That's super secret information. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, right now it really is just 
beta testing, right? It's it's all in these pilot projects, but you know, eventually it is going to be this delivery to your door. Right now, what ODOT is using the drones for is, um, you know, a lot like when we see the, the traffic reporters in the morning on the news, and there's these stationary cameras at very distinct locations on our highways. Well, with the drones, you're able to constantly move those locations around, and you're able to zoom in and fly out specifically to different scenes of accidents. It's able to help law enforcement get different perspectives before they're going into um, different you know, safety scenarios where there could be, you know, fires or crashes or difficult to reach locations. So right now, most of it is video testing, um, but those uh, uh, pilots are sitting in offices flying those drones. Uh, eventually, I think we will get to a world where things are being delivered by drones to our doors. And what about the fiber optic cable that goes down there? Is, is that something that local area businesses can tap into for internet service that don't have good service at this point? So right now, it's, it's a system that is owned by ODOT and the COG. So what we're doing is we're allowing companies to use it for, uh, for research projects. Uh, where we're connecting our fiber back to um, servers at uh, one of our data centers here in Dublin. So right now it's it's just a testing environment for, with fiber optics. It's not necessarily a public utility. But I will agree with you. We have to work on getting better connectivity. Colleen, I have a quick question. Honda has had for a number of years, the single pilot aircraft that's a whole, it's not a whole lot bigger than a Honda Accord. It's in their museum there and they've always talked about wanting to bring that to market and it would seem that this corridor with the, with the technology there to do that. Have you had any discussions in your beta group with uh, about that, uh, about that technology and, uh, and, and any rollout information? You know, it's, it's an interesting balance because we're out here bragging about this ecosystem that we're creating, but a lot of the testing that is happening, um, we can't necessarily be bragging about because it's testing and a lot of companies have some confidentiality requirements, right? So I can't talk specifically about that, um, but there are uh, on our website, on the betadistrict.com, uh, there are some test cases and there is um, several links to news articles about companies um, who are willing to talk about the testing that they're doing out there right now. So I, I would encourage you all to go and read about um, the companies that are willing to share what they're doing. Uh, but I'm excited to know that uh, eventually, everybody that's out there testing will at one point want to talk about what they're doing and uh, what results testing on the corridor uh, is giving them to roll things out uh, in the public. So how's that for a non-answer? Well, thank you, Colleen. Your Cheshire cat smile kind of gave away the answer. but <laughs> um, Colleen, are, does Dublin have plans to set up smart traffic lights and things like that in our area too? Yes, uh, I, you know, we're working constantly with our engineering department um, and our IT department. What's exciting is how uh, internally you have economic development working uh, with engineering, working with uh, our CIO on how we're going to be uh, bringing uh, all this technology into Dublin. We do have six connected traffic lights right now that are collecting data. Um, and like I said, we do have some monitoring going on in our roundabouts, but uh, we're just at the beginning of rolling these things out. So uh, yes, over the next you know, five years, I see a lot of expansion happening uh, within, within Dublin on our public infrastructure. All right, well, Colleen, we thank you for being here today and uh, sharing with us the latest on the Route 33 corridor. It's obviously very exciting and uh, we appreciate you taking the time to update us on that today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And hi, Dave McKee. I see that you just sent me a little message there. So good to see you. 
And uh, I can only see one of my five screens full of people. So if I didn't get to say hello to you, um, thanks for having me. Uh, I always appreciate being here. Uh, next week, uh, May 14th, uh, we are returning to hybrid meeting format. Our speaker is going to be Patrick Terrian with the Columbus Council on World Affairs. We'll be at meeting at Mirfield Village Country Club. Uh, the door is open about 7.30. The meeting starts at 7.45. Um, so join us there if you'd like. If not, we'll, we'll have the owl set up and we'll be doing the um, Zoom as well. So you pick however you feel safe about uh, attending that meeting. Um, Dave Williamson is reactivating the sergeant at arms role next week. And from what I understand, he's very anxious to get caught up on all the missed fines. So bring a lot of cash to the, uh, to the club with you. A lot of dollar bills next week. Um, our quote of the week comes from Warren Buffett. And I think it's relevant to today's presentation. Someone is sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And uh, we will see you next week. Hopefully see a lot of you in person. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.